today. We are Jaku and Tash are the Kok, and we have some exciting announcements that we want to share with you today. If you are joining us for the first time, a very, very big welcome to all of you. We are really hoping you enjoy the service with us. Yes, and last week, Sunday morning, was a real highlight as it was the first time that us as a church gathered um, in person and we went up the mountain and had a special praise and worship session together and Mark shared a word and we got home and just realized mm. what a special thing community is mm. and yeah it's a real value for mm. us as a church mm. and with that in mind we have some further good news to share with you this morning. Yes so from today we are all gathering together in person again very exciting so so glad we can do it but um just we are not gathering at the high school Stella Bosch. we will be gathering at the united church in van riebeek street um, and then there are only going to be two service um, times it's going to be at 4 30 and at 6 30 but very important is that you need to register online so please remember to register online if you can't make it then we can you can still watch the online service that will still be going for some time until further notice okay yes so just a reminder again 4 30 and 6 30 at the united church and very exciting as well at the 4 30 service we will have a kids church as well so mm. please bring the little ones mm. and come join in some community yes then we have further exciting news yeah. that if you know Yaku and myself, you'll know that we're super passionate about marriage. And this week, Thursday evening, we are starting a new marriage course as a church. And yes, like we always say, you know, we take care of our cars. We have them serviced mm -hmm. annually. We take care of our homes. We ensure that we give it a layer of paint every now and again. We look after our bodies by going to the gym and eating healthily. Um, so why not also investing and taking take care of our marriages mm. and and we know that god says it's the most important relationship yeah. that we have on earth apart from our relationship with the father um the the relationship between husband and wife mm. is really the basis on which a nation mm. is built so yes whether you are married for one year or 30 years <laughs> maybe your marriage is thriving at the moment or you're going through a really tough season of mm. feeling disconnected mm no matter what your situation this course is for you and we want to invite you to join in um, it's a very nice format so what you need to do to join firstly go to the church website and register mm -hmm. then before this Thursday evening you will receive a special starter pack with all you need to um, go through the course mm -hmm. and then it will be for seven weeks every Thursday night at seven o'clock we will gather online on a zoom call just for 15 minutes uh, to have an activation and kickoff session and uh, just feel connected and, and uh, excited mm. about what's coming. And then it's actually in a date night style. So you and your spouse will be working through that evening's topic on your mm. own in a special mm. date night, um, facilitated through the course material and through the activation session at the beginning. So it's really, really special and something to look forward to and just mm. a special time and take time that you guys invest in as as a marriage and mm. we are really expectant of what the lord wants to do in our marriages mm. so make sure you don't miss out yes thanks so and our last announcement is just on tithes and offerings um, we want to encourage all of you just in this time just to still give um, giving is part of blessing and blessing others and you can give by mm. scanning the snap scan code or you can find the banking details on our website and you can do an EFT. Um, and we also want to remind you of our Mercy Fund. Our Mercy Fund is really there for all our families and people um, in, in our community that's in financial hardship and that we know that needs that bit of financial support. So if the Lord puts it on your heart, um, please respond and be obedient to that to that voice and, and to that calling of God just to give to the Mercy Fund so that we can help our community just get back um, in, in, in a good state um, 
And we, yeah, and we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you for giving just freely and, and being obedient to God's voice and his um, calling on you. So with that, we, um, we want to just say, enjoy have a great it. service. Yeah, enjoy it. We're now going to go into worship. And yeah, we're going to hand over to the band. Yeah. Enjoy the service, guys. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Are we ready to worship? Arise. Arise, my soul. Remember this. He took my sin and he buried it no longer I who lives now Jesus lives in me for I was dead in sin but I woke up to see the light you Jesus that you are good may you be magnified may you be glorified we thank you that we can find our refuge and rest in you Lord Jesus in the crushing in the crushing in the pressing you are making you In the sore light, now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need 
to understand Make me a vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing But all you've given me Jesus, bring you one out of me In the crushing Pressing, you are making new wine in the soil. So oh. 
Hey friends, it's good to be with you again. Um, I get the privilege of starting a series called The Art of Rest. The Art of Rest. So let me pray for us, and then I'll get into my message. Father, thank you for the fact that you are God in heaven, but also God on earth, that you control everything about our lives. And thank you that even as we speak about rest, in this series, Father, that we as a church would experience the deep rest of God. Father, I pray for every person listening, and I pray for myself speaking. I pray that your grace will be there for me to communicate and for them to, to hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So like I mentioned, I'm going to be sharing a message from our new series, The Art of Rest. And so the, the first message is called The Promise of Rest. The Promise of Rest. It's an I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Normally, I get quite quickly into the scriptures. And today, I'm going to take a little bit more time to set up the series, since it's actually the first one in our series. So the good question is to ask is, why are we doing a series on rest? One reason is that our time, has pro our time as in 2020, the times we live in, are probably the most hurried, the most rushed, the most anxious, the most stressed generation that has ever existed. And uh, often, you know, when we, when we meet each other, we'll trade stories about our kids and, and work and that pressure and, and our boss. And, and you know, there's, our lives are a world of constant hurry. And we, the thing about it is it's become normal. We almost don't realize that this is not how life was meant to be lived. Occasionally, we'll have a, a minor sense that, whoa, this isn't, this isn't how it's supposed to be. 
but then we just get back on the treadmill and we keep going. You know, I, I have a friend who always jokes about wanting to leave everything and run off to Fiji. And he laughs. And, but both of us know that it's, it's a joke. But deep down, there's a sense in, in thinking about the world like the world is spinning so fast. I wish I could just get off, run, and just be away from all the hurry and the bustle. Something that we don't consider when the world is all going, when we're running from this to picking children up here or academics trying to get our thesis in, is how much we actually lose, how much is stolen from us when we're hurried, rushed, and anxious. So Dallas Willard says this about hurry. He says, hurry is the great enemy of the spiritual life in our day. That's enough. You know, your dreams for God, my dreams for God might be disturbed by sin. You know, we often think of sin and evil as things that can come in between. But I tell you what, hurry has just as much power to separate us from God as sin does. Here's a, a great book, which I, I probably read a third of it. I tend to do that. Is by John Mark Comer. And he says, he says this. He said, both sin and busyness have the exact same effect. They cut, they cut off your connection to God and to other people and even to your own soul. And he says, hurry and love are incompatible. Wow. Can you see how much we lose? And I think at the end of this message, I think you and I will be going, thank God for the fact that you have provided rest and an escape from the hurried world that everyone else thinks is normal. Here are 10 signs that you may need to take this message very seriously. 10 signs that you need rest, you need to slow down, you need to escape the world of hurry. One, irritability. You find yourself, something small happens. Perhaps it's someone cuts you off in traffic and road rage just springs out. Sometimes we go, oh, that's just my personality. Sometimes it's the fact that we are rushing around so much that we are not ourselves. Second thing, hypersensitivity. A small thing happens and it derails your whole day. Someone says something small and it's a big deal, a much bigger deal than it normally would be if you weren't so hurried. Restlessness. When you actually try to slow down, you find you can't relax. You find your mind is racing. All kinds of ideas. That thing that you left unfinished at the office. That thing that your boss said you should do. And all of it just kind of springs on you when you try to slow down. Workaholism. You can't stop. Work is constantly calling you. Or, or maybe, maybe it's just non-stop activity. Emotional numbness. This is where it's... You meet a friend and they're going through a tragedy and they just come to you and your first thought, even though you know and you love that friend, is not another thing that I have to consider. All you know is that you feel absolutely nothing. Your heart just doesn't have the capacity to take on more things that are going on in the world. How about out of order priorities? So someone comes to you and says, what should you be doing? And you think, I don't know what I should be doing. I know what I must do at this moment. And you, you don't have time to think about bigger things like, like calling, whether you are serving God's purpose for your life. There's just too much to do. You can't slow down enough to think deeply about the purpose of, and meaning for your life or life in general. Lack of care of your body. You know you should exercise. You know you should eat better. But life is just too quick for that. Escapist behaviors, I like this one especially. This is one of the primary indicators that your life is out of whack. And we all have our different poisons, but things like overeating. You find yourself binge watching on series and you're like, I'm not even enjoying this, but I just keep going through it. How about social media? You're just, you find yourself for 30 minutes, an hour, just flicking through it. And you'll be like, you might be like, maybe that's an indicator that I have more, too much time. Sometimes that's an indicator that you're overwhelmed with life and you, you're just trying to Jump off the ship. Other things. Netflix. Pornography. We all have our own little poison. Here's one. Slippage of spiritual disciplines. You find that there's just no time to meet with God. And you know, when, you, when you're overly busy, that's normally the first thing. The thing you need most to connect with God is normally the thing that goes out the door. And the last one is isolation. 
you feel disconnected from people, from God, and even yourself. If any of those things sounded familiar, maybe you need to perk up your ears and listen to this message. Now, there's a simple solution to hurry, anxiety, stress, running around, and it's an ingenious solution. It's going to blow your mind, and it's called the Sabbath. I hear some of you guys going, <laughs> the Sabbath, are you telling me that taking one day off in a week is going to miraculously cure my problems of stress and worry and rushing around and hurry? I can hear the doubt already clicking in your mind and in our minds, and we're going, okay. But I think at this end of this message, you're going to go, wow, what a principle, what, what an opportunity. You see, it's more than just about the one day. This principle of Sabbath will affect all of your life. It will seep into all of your life because it's an invitation to live life a different way. So, before I actually get into the principle of Sabbath, which is um, something one of the commandments that God gives in Exodus 20. There's a whole lot of context for the Sabbath and for what God said about the Sabbath. You see, it wasn't just about that one commandment. It was God speaking to a, a group of people who were at that time in a current situation of life, which is so different from the life that God was offering them. Let me, let me read to you from Exodus 5. And this, is, this was their experience of life. Maybe it'll sound a little bit familiar. Exodus 5 verse 4 says this. Verse 4. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take these people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters, the, the, uh, the NIV actually says slave drivers, of the people and their foremen, you shall no longer give the people straw to make bricks as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the, members, but the number of bricks that they made in the past, you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. Let heavier work be laid on the men that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. Now, what's going on here? A few things that I want to draw your attention to from this passage. It says, it actually talks about Pharaoh driving the people nonstop. Whenever the guys wanted to stop, Pharaoh was like, no, keep going. You know, that's one of the things about their life. It was nonstop. It was like the, the wheels were constantly moving and there was no break from the work. The second thing is, notice how many times the word burden there was mentioned. You see, in a world where you're hurried, have you noticed that even good things can seem like a burden? Even the children that you love, when you're tired and worn out, can seem like a burden. The marriage of the person that you married and vowed to live with forever, it, becomes, it can seem like a burden when you've got 50 million things to do. And they're all spinning at the same time. Notice that word driving. You know, the opposite of being called is, the, is being driven. And you know, drivenness, no matter how sexy you make it sound, oh, I've got this, I've just got a driven personality, you know, I'm a high achiever. No matter how we make it sound, an over busy life is never a good thing. It's always, the Bible actually just calls it bondage, slavery. That's what it is. Um, here's the, the fourth thing. It's, NIV reads like this. It says, they're lazy. You know, there are environments where good boundaries and healthy priorities are just called being lazy. Maybe it's your work environment, and, and, and it seems like there's always another demand, and, and you try to put boundaries because you know that a life where work spills into everything is not healthy, and, and you find that your boss is going... Is, either hinting or directly saying, you're lazy, give more. That's not God's will for our lives. There has to be a time where we switch off. That's not lazy. We have to know the difference between hard work and hurry and busyness and stress and anxiety, which is the driven life that God has not called us to. This is the last one, and the last one is so, so interesting. Have you noticed 
the motivation Pharaoh gives for keeping the people busy. He says this. He says, give them work to do so that they won't fill their minds with these idle ideas. He's almost in a sense saying this. He's saying, let them be so busy that they don't see what life is about, that they don't start thinking that there's a better way to live. They don't start thinking that this is not normal. They don't start dreaming about the fact that they can actually go on holiday with their wife and children and not check their email three times a day, or that they can actually sit at the table and enjoy dinner with the family and not be constantly checking their phone to see about communication from work, or that the, the wife that they married who they promised friendship with, that they can actually spend significant time every week and grow this friendship to a flaming love like it's meant to be, rather than constantly just just being partners who pay the bills together, share a bed together, but don't do life together. You know, keep them busy so that they don't actually realize that the, the thing that they're studying is something that they're passionate about and that they actually want to do this or the ministry that they've been called to is from God. Keep them busy so they don't see it as a calling, but they see it as a, a duty that they must do to keep the people happy. Can you see that? Busyness can rob us of the meaning. And that's, 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 that's what, that was Pharaoh's intention here. But let me get to... The last thing I'll say is keep them busy so they, they don't see that they have an opportunity to spend 45 minutes a day daily with, with me. Don't let them think about the fact that their, their time with me will change every other area of their life. Keep them, keep them so busy that they don't see the value of reading the scriptures, of talking to me. Now, when you hear that, the Sabbath was an invitation to live life exactly not like Pharaoh intended. It was an invitation to the life that God intended. You see, sometimes we think of the Sabbath a little bit like a rule. You know, like the Jews, they have uh, the Sabbath elevators even. So you wouldn't, so the elevator actually stops on every floor so you don't have to press the floor. The first time I went on a, on a Jewish elevator, I was like, this is the oddest thing. But you know, sometimes we think of Sabbath like this rule. But Sabbath is actually an invitation, like I said, to a different way to live. That's why when we hear Jesus say, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, upon you, because my yoke is easy and my burden, hear that word, is light. So Jesus is again inviting us to a way to live where we become truly ourselves. You see, he, will, he won't take work away from us. But he will teach us how to live in such a way that we live life with God. So Exodus 20, verse 8 to 11, that's the, the scripture about Sabbath. And then from this scripture, I'm going to give two principles before we end. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Do you hear those two invitations? So the two invitations are this. The first one is, it's an invitation to trust. An invitation to trust. And so when we, the scriptures say, take a day, and on that day, cease from working. Do not work on that day. Do not do anything. Just, just spend the time with God. Now, there, there are four things that Sabbath is really about. Sabbath is about um, stopping, not rushing around, stopping from work, it's about resting. It's about enjoying. And then it's about thinking and remembering and considering and contemplating. So those four things. Now, the first two things I'm going to speak about have to do with trust. So I said it's an invitation to trust. Here's what happens when we take the Sabbath and we say, okay, on this day, I'm dedicating this day to you, Lord. It might sound legalistic, but it's so powerful because what happens when you take a Sabbath day is you step off the throne and you say, God, 
The world will go on without me. I'm not what makes this world go round. You are. When we, when we stop from that, we say, you know, my God is not my boss. My God is not progressing in my company. My God is not even my family. My God is not this or that. My God is not my academics. Academic excellence is not my God. You know, if anything drives you, it actually starts to take the place of God. And so when we do that, we, when, we, when we trust God by saying, on this day I'm not going to do anything, we're reminded of this fact. The world doesn't run on principles. God actually runs the world. And so it's a, an invitation to do life, to kind of almost take God by the hand and say, God, let's walk through life together. Really, really important is this. When I speak about a, a new way to live, it's not a way of doing life for God. It's a way of doing life with God. What kind of God am I speaking about? I'm speaking about the creator of the universe who is inviting us to enjoy life like he does. And so, Isaiah 64 verse 4, one of my favorite scriptures says this, and listen so closely. For from of old, no one has heard nor perceived by the ear nor has the eye seen a God beside you who works and shows himself active on behalf of him who earnestly waits for him. Can you see that? So our role on the Sabbath days, once we rest and once we stop and once we go, okay, God, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm, not, I'm trusting this area to you. Whatever is unfinished, I'm trusting that you will take control and you would make sure you would work whilst I'm waiting on you. And, and, and so it spills over from that one day into all of life because all of a sudden, because on that Sabbath day, your heart is being tilted and you're, be, you're beginning to recognize that God, I'm not, I'm not as indispensable to the running of this world as I thought. It allows you on your Monday or your Tuesday or your Wednesday or Thursday when, you, when, when, when work is done, it's finished. And you go, okay, God, I've done, I've worked hard. It's not a rescue. It's not, it's not a mattress, hey, don't work. It's an opportunity to embrace our limits. You know, we all have limits, and when we go beyond our limits, they actually damage us. And the Sabbath, Jesus says the Sabbath was made for man because God knows that we have limits. And he calls us to be people and, and not to play the role of God. And not to allow anything else to play the role of God. So, do we trust Him? The second thing, and I, I absolutely love this, is an, it's an invitation to worship. An invitation to worship. And think about it this way. We've got the scripture where it says, On the seventh day God rested from all His work and He blessed the seventh day and called it holy. Now, do you think that God gets tired? It's not a trick question. Obviously, God didn't get tired. So what was God doing on the seventh day? He was enjoying the work that he had, of what he had created. And so he was thinking about and examining it and going, wow, this is amazing, and savoring it, right? So it's an invitation for us to do the same. What does that have to do with worship? Here's what it has to do with worship. A while ago... Um, God challenged me because I have this tendency to go from one thing to the other. So when I finish something, I don't look back and I don't celebrate it. And I don't go, wow, that was complete. I'm glad I did that. Thank you, Lord, and celebrate and enjoy it before I move on to the next thing. And God said, you know, that, that behavior is robbing, you of glory and it's making, robbing me of glory and it's making you anxious. You know what happens here is that God is calling us to enjoy, to slow down and enjoy the, the gifts that he's given. Think about your family. When you slow down and you begin to appreciate them, that's what you do on the Sabbath day is you go, God, and everything that you enjoy, work, do you know that you can enjoy work? You see, often if we're, if we're constantly feeling like we need to keep moving, da, 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 we need to keep producing, 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 work becomes a burden. And it actually becomes, sometimes becomes our God. 
But God desires for us to begin to rest and enjoy it and savor it and celebrate it and say, okay, this was the end of a tough week. This, is the, this was the limit, and I, I did this work. God, thank you. This work is a gift from you. God, thank you. My family is a gift from you. And even just when you go around and you, you walk and you begin to see, like this season in Stellenbosch, you see the flowers, and you savor them and you slow down. You know, the world has has caught on to some of this, and there's been a lot of talk about mindfulness. Nehemiah had it right when he said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. When we begin to savor and rejoice in and enjoy and be thankful for what God has done and given us, that makes us begin to see God as the source of absolutely everything. It causes us to worship. And you know we were designed to worship and enjoy and to savor. And so our hearts now, as we do that, connect to God and they begin to, to see, we begin to see God for what He is. And our attachment to all the other things, all the worry begins to drain away as worship fills our hearts. So it's an invitation to worship. So the last thing I'll say, as, as we close this message, is Mark 2, verse 27, I referred to the scripture. This was Jesus. He said, and he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. See, God knows our hearts. He knows our tendency to sometimes go overboard, to feel burdens we shouldn't, to carry weights we shouldn't. So he makes a Sabbath. And so, if as I've been speaking, some of this message hit home, I want to ask you to respond in the way you know how and ask you, will you receive his invitation to trust? Perhaps in the area of your work, have you been, has your boss been driving your life? And you need to go, okay, Jesus, I'm going to trust you more than I trust my boss. There's going to come a time where I'm going to stop because you say so. And I'm going to put a boundary here. Or perhaps it's in the area of relationships. You know, some of us need to hear this because we think, oh, relationships, that's not work. But, you know, some of us are driven by the need to approve of the approval of others. And so that drives us. And, and God is going, no, 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 no. Trust me more than you trust other people. There's a time when enough is enough. You can't provide any more for your family. It's a time to rest and stop. Or is God calling you to savor and enjoy? Maybe some of us have not learned to ask the question, what are the things that I enjoy in this world? And realize that some of your leisure may be running, maybe it's cooking, is worship to God. Because God, as you do that, you do it in the enjoyment of what God has created. Do you maybe need to carve out some time to have fun, to laugh, to worship, to read your Bible, to pray, to listen to music? Will you receive Jesus' invitation to carry his light yoke as he Sabbath? Let me pray for us. Jesus, thank you that you didn't, enjoy, you didn't design the world to be this hurried, stressful, always on the go world. Thank you that you are slowing us down in this season and you are saying, do you trust me? Will you worship me with your rhythm of life? Jesus, we want to say that you are not a hard taskmaster. And when we as Christians live like that, we don't bring you glory. And we don't live how you've called us to live and, and we're less than ourselves so Lord Jesus we ask you to to show yourself strong in these areas we give you the areas where we've kept control which should be yours where we thought we can't get off where we responded to the voice of Pharaoh rather than to the voice of God we choose your way thank you Lord Amen. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And uh, enjoy the rest of the series. Cheers.
Father, we thank you that we are held in your hands, Lord. We thank you that your mercies never fail us, Father. And we just thank you that, Lord, we can rest in your goodness, Lord. That we can rest in who you are, Father. That we don't have to be anything, Lord. That we can rest in exactly who you are, Lord. So we just surrender, Lord. We surrender our busyness. We surrender our lives, Father. And we just rest in the goodness, Lord, of who you are. 